And we are back, guys. We uh, Noxious, we sapped him. We sent him back to the hand. We have drawn Monk, number one replacement in a probably better than the original. Welcome to the cast. Thanks for filling in. I mean, Noxious just having a rough time of it. Glad you could be here. Yeah, thanks for having me today. And I'm really excited to cast the next few games, uh, especially because uh, one of my teammates, Naria, is going to be playing against uh, the, the one and only life coach. Yeah, life coach... Uh, you know, I mean, the kid, he, he had a, some confounding games against Kufdan early. I don't know if you were watching him, but uh, absolutely fantastic games. Uh, Nyria and Life Coach, our next round here, going to be playing our second quarterfinal of the day. The other two quarterfinals going to be tomorrow. Decide who is going to fill out that semifinal round with Kalinto. Um, obviously, Nyria coming into this one, he was first in his group, Group D. So just been playing really, really well. And Monk helping him uh, train up for this one as we get really nice and quick here into uh, game one so we can watch Life Coach think real hard. Uh, any insights, man? Is he prepped? Is he ready? Oh, yeah. He was definitely like trying to figure out his lineup for uh, this tournament all the way until like um, just a few hours ago or like early this morning because he was having a really hard time deciding. There's a lot of decks that have been doing really well for him. Like uh, Rogue has been doing really well. And um, like Hunter has always been doing well. But some decks like uh, Zoo, for example, um, a lot of people were telling him to bring the deck, but he just hasn't been performing well with that deck. So he opts for like a slightly different lineup. And I believe his lineup is going to be, uh, I haven't seen it, but uh, he told me yesterday, I think it's going to be something like Mage, uh, Warrior, and Hunter to that extent. I'll you have to check that man. out. Right on there, Hunter, Warrior, Mage. Uh, he's going to be running Life Coach is running Warrior Druid Hunter. And we're going to get it underway, man. Uh, execute sitting in the hand for Life Coach. Uh, Nyria on the coin. Yeah, so this is a pretty interesting matchup. It's uh, Patron Warrior, of course, versus Freeze Mage. And normally a lot of people uh, would say that Patron Warrior is a huge, huge favorite simply because of the, uh, the armor that they can gain from the Armorsmiths. Um, and in fact, in tournament play, I believe it's something like seven to one in favor of patron rogue like just uh overall matches but nyria he's told me like he's actually really confident in this matchup or as i guess as confident as you can be because he's yeah. practiced this matchup a lot and in fact in the archon team league last week he beat ecops patron warrior with a freeze mage so definitely impressive and i believe uh that seven to one record i was referring to he's the only freeze mage player that's ever beaten a patron warrior so, I mean, he is the one. So if you're going to watch a guy roll it out, I mean, obviously, you, you see where the problem rolls in. You're going to be able to freeze him up for a turn, but next turn, those patrons are still going to be sitting there looking real ugly and real ready to hurt you. Uh, your win conditions kind of end up putting you in this place where you kind of need to get a lot done at once uh, in a part of the game that maybe those patrons are already scaring on the board. Life coach going to take his time here, going to armor up, uh, yeah. call it a day, and send it back over to Nyria. This is actually a really funny matchup because typically the way it goes is both players are just kind of doing their own thing, and um, the patrons, they, uh, the patron warrior player, they get a field on the board, they get a bunch of patrons, then uh, the um, the mage player has to respond with like a flame strike or something like that. And actually what ends up happening is both players tend to go to fatigue. Like, you can't really burst your opponent out in this matchup because the freeze mage, they don't put a lot of minions on the board, so you can't make those huge frothing berserkers, and you have to have to like frost bolt or fireball either the frothings or the um, the Emperor Thor's in. So we're, we're going to probably expect to see a long game. And Naria, um, just in practice, he's told me the way you win this matchup as um, as the Patron Warrior player, as Life Coach, is you basically try to draw as a little into your deck as possible. So what that means is maybe holding on into your Acolytes, maybe Battle Raging for uh, zero cards is actually pretty crucial. And that's something not a lot of uh, players would think about. But I'm sure Life Coach, he has a lot of experience in this matchup. Um, Oh, I'm going to be curious to, to see if he actually does that. Life Coach, going to keep it comfortable there. Armor up a second time as Arcane Intellect going to pull Barrier and Flame Strike. So Nyria got himself a nice little comfortable set of spells as things roll on through the game here. I, I got to say, it's one of those things that it, it always you, you'll find those players, a lot of players tend to be uncomfortable playing really, really super deep into the game. Uh, I mean, a Patron Warrior is always a scary one because you don't want to sit on things for too terribly long. So, I mean, I got to say kudos to Nyria. Uh, for being the sort of guy that can play comfortable into a long game, that uh, takes you know a lot of uh, a lot of chutzpah. Oh, definitely. Now, Rias, he's always been known as a very uh, defensive player, a player that really likes to take it into the long game. Whereas some players, maybe um, for example, uh, a lot of the Dignitas players, they really like to go for aggro strategies. And credits to them. 
But Nuri is the guy that's like, okay, I'm going to win the long game where I can just make the, the least mistakes as possible. Now you're going to take a little manor nap there as Inventor gets onto the board. He's going to draw a death spite. Life coach is ice barrier up for Nyria. And sends it right back on over. Yeah. So not really too exciting, this matchup. Uh, just generally, there's a lot of, um, there, there's not a lot of back and forth. You, you'll see each other, you'll see both players just passing turns a lot, but not too much action. Life coach is going to be hesitant to commit too much to the board because he knows his opponent just has the answers. Um, and Nyria, I think he's still, he's just looking to take it to the long game. Like we said, um, he's just going to deal with his opponent's threats and not even use the win condition of like a lot of burn spells uh, into his opponent's face because typically you can't really do that against a competent patron warrior who gets his armor smith down. Yeah, and life coach, absolutely a competent player, competent patron warrior player. Uh, you know, Nyria sitting in a good spot. He's looking comfortable. He's looking confident on camp. Life coach looking uh, pretty much as stressed out as he always looks and uh, waiting to rope again. We'll see what he's got here. He's got a patron in deck. He's got those unstable goals, which we've seen start to come into the patron deck a little bit more. He's going to go ahead and test that, find out that it's ice bearing. A little bit of armor going to go on for Nyria. Uh, two chunked off of it, and then it'll be a death spike. Yeah, Death Spite, definitely one of the most important cards in Patron Warrior. It just lets you set up for um, it lets you set up for all these patron, the huge patron turns, and it's one of your six world win effects uh, in Patron Warrior. I think actually um, one um, difference in Patron Warrior, one revolution that has come up in the last two or three weeks, is that a lot of players have been opting in to put more cycle cards into their hand um, instead of just a lot of strong minions. For example, we'll have more slams in the deck. We'll have uh, more battle. We'll have the same amount of battle rages. We'll have more no mission inventors. Um, even players adding shield blocks without adding shield slams in the deck. And I think that actually it hurts the freeze mage matchup because you want more threats. And in order to take, uh, in order to put more of these uh, cycle cards into your deck, you have to take out cards like Grom, like Doctor Boom, and uh, those are like kind of the exact cards you want against freeze mage. So it's kind yeah, of like the trends uh, playing towards the freeze mage player. Yeah, you do end up with, with a Gnomish Inventor, which is not a terribly large threat. I mean, plenty of health on it, so it's definitely something that if Nyria wants to, if he's worried about getting chipped here and there, he's he's going to want to he's gonna want to clean up. But as it is, he's comfortable. Big game hunter grab for life coach into the hand it goes. He's got two frothing berserkers sitting in there. So plenty of options as the game continues to roll on here. Obviously, he knows Nyria at this point in the game has got to be sitting on at least a couple of answers to some of those things and doesn't want to play into them. Obviously, you don't want to spend too much of the death death spite either get yourself into a bad situation so life coach rightly taking his time here not that life coach wouldn't take his time that's kind of his thing but he is going to spin a charge get that uh, secret burn through and get that mad scientist off the field go to face with the other two armor up and send it back over yeah it's kind of a not too interesting of a turn but i actually expect we'll see a lot of these turns uh uh, in the coming future because a lot of it is about just not playing your threats out um, as early as possible just um, like saving them until you can get something huge like a huge patron board or a huge like frothing berserkers to um, kind of uh, KO your opponent now I think life coach at this point he also he's seen an ice barrier but maybe he's not 100% sure that this is freeze mage I mean 99% of the time it will be, but Nyria has actually been known for using variations of, uh, of Echo Mage, um, popularized by Neville from Root Gaming. And um, he has played it in tournaments before, but it's just uh, probably not the... I I'm just wondering if Light Coach is thinking about that. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a hard one to do because Nyria has been, he's given precious little information here. Obviously, he's seen the ice barrier, seen a mad scientist come out, but he just doesn't have a lot. So it looks like he's just going to bonk on the face again, see what he can get. He's going to see another ice barrier yeah. and with then the probably just go, I just want a little bit more. Exactly. Um, with the second ice barrier, I think he can make the read that this is Freeze Mage. And Nyria, he, in the Archon Team League again, he's been playing Freeze Mage pretty much every single week. Um, another interesting fact is that um, Liquid and Nylum will actually be playing in the Archon Team League later this week. So this might be kind of a precursor to that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, will they be bringing like the similar decks? Um, will they be bringing something different? I, I don't know. I gotta say, I've been I've been very much enjoying watching uh, the team league. Nice little changes of pace there, because obviously you have to really think about which two you're gonna bring, how you're gonna play them in there. I mean, obviously Kalinto had just a yeah. just okay. a terrible time of it, but uh, <laughs> poor guy. What are you gonna do? Uh, ping onto the acolyte coin. So this is exactly what I was talking about, Nyria. He's like the guy that will um, 
he says he knows how to play this matchup better than like pretty much anyone, and that's because he um well he he basically the style that he plays is he wants his opponent to draw as many cards as possible, uh, just so he'll get to fatigue faster than Nyria will. You'll notice that Nyria he hasn't played a mad scientist yet, I believe. Um, or he, no, he's played a uh, he's played few mad scientists. He hasn't played, played his acolytes down, and he hasn't played his arcane intellect. So, um, life coach will be much further in the deck than Nyria. Yeah, I mean, it's just a killer slow play here for Nyria. It's it's a stalemate as well because life coach knows that he can't start to fill the board up. He just burned a fiery war axe. I, you know, didn't look too affected by it, but at some point he's going to basically have to start putting some sacrificial lambs up there before he starts missing out on some crucial cards. Uh, you can't just watch those burn to cinders. He's got some nice ones in the deck, but uh, I mean, it's not going to get him through and obviously you can't play anything crucial. So Nyria really, I mean, a, a great way to play this and really putting on a clinic here. Um, it's just information denial. Life coach knows that if he throws something down on the board, it's going to get cleared away. He's got individual shots. He's got the flame strike in there to clear the board if he needs to. Armorsmith going to come out. Um, you know, the flame strike's in there, so if he wants to clear it away, he can definitely spin that. you got to get some patrons on and might be enough to do it. Yeah, exactly. This is uh, exactly what Nyria was hoping for. Just Life Coach is kind of forced to throw down something on the board, and then Nyria will be able to respond to it easily with a flame strike. Basically, you want to you want to save your two flame strikes in order to deal with your opponent's two set of patrons. And Nyria, I'm almost certain he's going to play the flame strike here, pass, and then like just basically he's going to ask his opponent, "What else are you going to have next?" Because this just isn't enough. He's going to have an answer to this, and um, he'll be able to kind of uh, pretty much his plan is just to deal with all his opponent's threats. Yeah, and I mean, just yeah, just beautiful to watch here. Yeah. Uh, obviously, going to kick some armor over his way, sitting at 45, but Life Coach still stuck in a bad spot. He has no idea whether that other Flame Strike is sitting in Nyria's hand now. So again, he's got to kind of make that, that, that choice of, okay, do I try that again and see if I can sneak some in before he gets some more board clear done? Uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a tough spot to be in if you're Life Coach, and, and Nyria's sitting pretty at the moment. He's got a nice little hand sitting over there. He's got some ways to deal with it if he does end up taking... A reasonable chunk of damage and uh, you know spent the blizzard a little bit earlier which probably wouldn't hurt to have if he needs to buy some time but he's got the frost nova in there so nyria in a good spot life coach gonna have to think i mean it's a tough one like you said really uh nyria has found a nice little corner here especially with the recent changes to those patron warrior decks yeah i'm curious to see if life coach will actually just battle rage here for zero just to get rid of cards in his hand um, it's what Nyria would do. Uh, he's been telling me, yeah, you have to battle rage for zero in this matchup. You can't let your hand fill up too much. And that's kind of exactly what we saw two turns ago. Life Coach's hand filled up way too much that he was forced to play Patrons and he was forced to play um, the Death Spite Whirlwind and his actual Whirlwind in his hand. But no, Life Coach, he seems like he wants to hold on to the battle rage. Yeah, gonna armor up and sit on it for a minute here as Nyria grabs another Acolyte. I think nice. in any other matchup, yeah, I think in any other matchup, he would actually just, uh, he would just ping his uh, Acolyte of Pain. But in this matchup, again, he's going for the idea that, yeah, I'm going to pretty much outdraw my, or I'm going to draw not as many cards as my opponent. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I said it at the, at the start of the match, but just this sort of self-control to play a game like that, it goes against a lot of the sort of instinct of like, I want to get cards in my hands. I, you know, obviously there are times when you're playing things where you just want to kind of hold off. You want to get people through stuff, mill rogue, things like that. But it just takes an, an incredible amount of self-control and Nyria playing it perfectly here, really putting life coach in a bind is again, he's sitting on just an awkward hand full of things. He can't really throw out for fear that they're going to get wiped away or made useless. And, uh, yeah. Uh, it's just uh, it's fascinating to watch. It's a slow game, not necessarily the biggest boards. Nobody's screaming, everybody get in here, uh, you know, every other turn. But uh, it, it puts Life Coach in a, in a really just deadlock spot. And he's going to go to rope. These times, I mean, you make fun of Life Coach for going to rope a lot. But right now, I mean, you really can't afford to make a wrong move. Yeah, I'm wondering how many times Life Coach has actually ever been in this situation before. Because he's primarily a ladder player. And in fact, I just hit him on ladder yesterday. He just ladders all the time. Maybe not as much of a like a custom game player. And the problem with that is you pretty much never face this matchup on ladder. Um, you just it's just unheard of. There's pretty much there's so many patron warrior players, but there's zero freeze mage players. So I, I can definitely see why life coach he might have not as much experience as Nyria does in this matchup. Now we see uh, Nyria just throwing out those pyroblasts, and I think that's a good move because um, you're going to be pyroblasting your opponent's face for armor anyway. 
and um, you pretty much you, you're going to be using your fireballs to clear stuff like Emperor Thorazane. So just a good idea, just to throw that power blast early anyway. And also, um, if your opponent like weapons down your stuff and he activates his, he goes down below 30 HP. He activates his battle rage. That's good for you. So just like no bad, um, there's like nothing bad about that play basically. Yeah, I, like I said, I mean, it's 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 definitely a, a fun one to watch here. Grim Patron going to come out on the back of the. Uh, Commander there. He's going to do a little bonk, give a card over to Nyria. Nyria probably not too upset about that. He's going to get Arcane Intellect, but wanting to hold on to things. May not spend it for a while yet. Going to get through three more of that Ice Barrier, but not going to be left with the craziest uh, stuff on the board there. Obviously, uh, Life Coach saying, okay, I, I got to do it. Uh, he's got a Loot Hoarder in there as well. So Nyria with options here. If he really wants to get that board cleared away quickly, He's going to have to go digging. He's got Frost Nova to hold on for some time. And I think he had a Frost Bolt left over there. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be using his Arcane Intellect now just because, uh, first of all, he's probably going to play the Emperor this turn. And he wants to get as many cards reduced as possible. And second of all, I believe he's um, about like three or four cards behind his opponent in cards. So he doesn't really care too much that he's drawing. Like his opponent will still fatigue faster than him. And I think it'd be really interesting right now, actually, just to see like the number of cards both players have. Yeah, and just bad trades here for the patron if he wants to get Thorsan off the field, and he does. Uh, slam in there. I think he had an execute earlier, did he? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah it's over there. Okay. Digging down through a very full hand and trying to trying to check on things. I don't quite remember. There we go. So, you know, he'll have a little bit to work with here, but obviously life coach not necessarily in, uh, in the most ideal position here. We can see uh, it's starting to go in a way that life coach could conceivably get a board together. There's still another flame strike hanging out in the deck somewhere for Nyria. Uh, so uh, he's got it out here. Obviously life coach going to want to get some work done before he runs into that. He's going to draw into it. And uh, I mean, really playing into the strategy that Nyria is looking for another war song commander comes out and there's going to be battle rage. That's bite yeah. whirlwind and not a bad grab there. It's going to be acolyte of pain. Yeah, it's curious to see how Life Coach is playing that out. Um, he's basically saying, I don't really care too much about drawing these cards. I'll just um, I'll just have to beat you in a straight up game just before I get to fatigue. I'm not sure if he can actually accomplish that. One thing he has going for him though is that maybe there's no second flame strike in Naria's hand, but he does have like uh, just Frost Novas. He does have a Frost Bolt just to clear off that patron. And after that, um, what threats does Life Coach really have? It's pretty much just going to be the two Frothing Berserkers. Yeah, both the patrons out now, so just a single three health patron sitting there, and obviously Nyria equipped to deal with that. So, I mean, Life Coach developing a board quick fast is going to be just basically out of the question. He's still got his unstable ghoul in there to buy a little time to maybe throw some stuff up behind it, but obviously going to have to take the damage off of that. If he ends up in that situation, Nyria taking his time and thinking about it. He looks comfy, though. Life Coach looks just like he always does. Handsome, but stressed out. Mad Scientist is going to be the play here. First one, anyway. Loot Hoarder, think about it. Yeah, Mad Scientist will just be kind of vanilla 2-2. And I think it's more that Nyria just wants to get it out there because there's pretty much no way that the Mad Scientist will get a secret out seeing that both um, both Ice Barriers have already been played. Um, I think Life Coach right now, what he's thinking is that I really need to get through to my Emperor Thorzen really quickly because that's what's really going to be... Uh, key to enabling all my combos and it's actually really unfortunate i believe life coach has gone through like 20 to 25 of its cards and he still hasn't drawn emperor it's yeah, really eight sad cards, eight cards left in the deck for him so 22 in and he grabs execute i mean it's really just sitting at the back of the deck here as life coach struggling for a lifeline certainly i mean he's got uh He's got plenty of mana to play around with, but not a lot of great places to go with it. And again, there's still the concern that, uh, I mean, obviously I think the Frost Nova says, you know, maybe he would have flame strike that clear if he really wanted to get things taken care of there. So might be getting the read that the flame strike's not quite ready. But we'll yeah. see where Life Coach is up, ends up with it. It's going to be a frothing berserker out and a couple oh, others man. to follow, I'm sure. Is he going to go all in? This is going to be really surprising. Unstable ghoul. Might do. See where he goes. Yeah, gonna put some, uh, gonna put some hurt down. Whirlwind there. Yeah, he's building up something big. He's gonna get himself so, some patrons out. So what he's saying that here is, uh, I don't think you really have a flame strike here. So if you don't have a flame strike, it can actually be really problem problematic for you. 
And indeed, Nairia, he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that to clear his board. Ends up in a bad spot. Life Coach going to call the bluff on it. He's waited long enough. He says, hey, man, if I don't have to worry, Sam, I'm going to believe that you don't have Flame Strike. Nairia going to end up with an Alex Straza. And, ooh, yeah, not a great spot to be in. Doomsayer, big kid. Yeah, Can Doomsayer. Get to probably not the best uh, card right now, especially since... Uh, like, oh. you know your opponent has an execute by this point. And I believe Nuria, right now, he has 10 cards. So, oh, Frost Nova is burned. That's going to be a key one. At least Flame Strike wasn't burned, but Frost Nova is still going to be an important card. Yeah, yeah. It's again, no Flame Strike is just really the key here. And I'm wondering if Nuria, he had the opportunity to Frostbolt his, um, his opponent's, uh, his opponent's uh, patron on the last round. Final right? patron, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah he did have that. Blizzard out, Doomsayer gonna follow it. And an alternative flip to Flame Strike, and all, pretty much just as good. Yep. And and now we pretty much know that Life Coach, his only threat is the Warsong Commander and the Frothing Berserker. So Nervia just has to play around that. And if he if he just like defeats that one combo, he's gonna pretty much win the game. Yeah, he's got Alex Straza now. It was a dangerous spot, but he made it around to a point. Where Alex going to be uh, of a little bit more use. Thor Sand coming out here for Life Coach. Just, I mean, after he wanted to see that sitting in his hand. So he's got it there. It's going to make things a little bit more economical if he can get it out onto the field. But uh, right now, Nyria is sitting in a pretty good spot because he's got plenty of single target solutions here sitting in his hand. He's still got the ice block sitting around as well. So, you know, he's and anti Keelbot. So. In a good spot on the overall, Life Coach going to have to be the one to develop a board here and find a way to burn through. What was he got? Uh, 25 plus a nice block. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a lot. Oh, Nate, not, 20 plus 8, so yeah. more than that. Yeah, and not only that, but Nuri, he has pretty much all the answers. He has an anti killbot in his deck, which is not a card that a lot of people do add in their freeze mages. It's kind of like either anti killbot or Kona Cold or a second loot hoarder, but because he's an anti killbot, that I think that makes this matchup even better. I mean, second loot hoarder, it's not going to do much. Um, the uh, Kona Cold's probably going to do nothing in this matchup, so a pretty good tech choice by Nairia. Fireball grab here, got a little bit of extra juice on it. Uh, Life Coach, I mean, still sitting at 8 armor and 30 health, but he's just, he's into his deck extremely deep now, and that's exactly what Nairia wants to be looking at at the moment. He's got uh, some opportunities. Nairia going to go ahead and send Life Coach down to 15-7 armor on the over over the top of that. And uh, Frostbolt uh, is the look as well. Hey, he can pretty easily clear this board as well. But I think he's going to go for the play that gets rid of the uh, Death Spite. Like, it doesn't get rid of it, but it just basically forces the opponent not to uh, use the Death Spite next turn in order to like just summon more uh, or get more attack damage on the frothing berserker that Nairia knows is the last remaining threat and i believe uh life coach he's already used two whirlwinds he's already used uh one death spite and he's already used at least one unstable ghoul so life coach not only is he out of patrons not only does he have one war song and one frothing but he only has like one or two whirlwind effects left there's the harrison jones he brought in to uh make sure that oil rogues and other patron warriors did not cause him any consternation. Not going to be very much help here as Nyria not likely to uh, drop a weapon down anytime soon. Life coach, uh, there might be some moves left in the deck, but uh, again, he's, he's run a little bit low on time. He's going to get stuck right there. Not going to be able to death spite. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's got to go five, five into the eight, eight Do something that is execute left. So, I think the key here is that I don't believe a life coach right now can very safely pop this uh, ice block. And if he could, that might be a different story. But as it is now, oh, here's an inner rage being drawn. So that story might change. But uh, actually, the emperor already attacked. So yeah, there's no way to pop this ice block. So life coach just, he doesn't really have any ways to really deal with this board yet again. And now he just has to put stuff on the board. But he knows Nyria, he still has a lot of clears left. He has like probably a blizzard left probably another flame strike left but again he has to make sort of like a commitment that is semi all in at this point pgh gonna clean up the alex gnomish inventor gonna pull out a slam and there's a frost bolt for nyria got a doomsayer in there as well and some time to think 
Maria, a little, little smirk there. Good or bad smirk? What do you think? I think it's pretty much uh, his plan kind of didn't work out as he thought. And he actually got to the bottom of his deck before his opponent did. So it, it actually, like, it didn't work out uh, according to plan. Um, Life Coach, he didn't draw enough cards off the Alkalites and off his Battle Rages or his one Battle Rage. Or, yeah, he used both Battle Rages. That uh, Naria, he's pretty much out of too many options at this point. Um, he also, because his, he froze his opponent's face, he, his, he has less fireball opportunities to use with Archmage and Tinnitus. So, oh man, this is going to be difficult. Right now, the, the issue that Naria is dealing with is maybe the Ice Block gets popped next turn and he takes fatigue damage, which will immediately kill him. It's a tough spot to be in. Ice Lance and Frost Bolts is going to fly out. He's got some fireballs to uh, try to hold on. But uh, yeah, he managed to land a little bit early there. Death Spite and a little bit of Freeze Love right there. 5-4 sitting and waiting. Unstable Ghoul going to come out. And put something in the way of Nyria if Life Coach so chooses, if he's going to need to. Yeah, or I think, a, Commander. I think a key right now might be, uh, well, there's no armor smith, but I think right now it's just pretty much game over. If Life Coach can pop the block at 1 HP, which he can because it, this is pretty much exactly the, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, one more, one more ghoul, and this is exactly what he needs. He did the math correctly, and by popping this block at 1 HP, he pretty much says to Rhea, Hey, you played a good game, but uh, this is going to be, you're, take, you're going to take 1 fatigue damage, and that's <laughs> going to be it. Oh. Hoisted on his own petard, and Nyria going to lose the first game to Life Coach there, and a run down to fatigue. Nyria managed to land there first, even though it was his plan not to. So, well played by Life Coach. Well played by Nyria through a large part of the game. Um... You know, was there anything Nyria could have done differently there? Where where could he have made the turns? Or was Life Coach just on top of him uh, and had the right answers at the right time? I think maybe part of it was perhaps that he maybe went for the fireballs a bit too early onto his opponent's face. Another issue might be that Life Coach kind of forced too many draws onto Nyria when Nyria had the Acolyte of Pain on the board. So it, Nyria actually got to fatigue faster. Um, yeah, just... Basically, overall, Nyria did not plan to get to the end of his deck that fast. Whereas Life Coach, he kind of forced Nyria's hand by putting on enough pressure and by forcing him to draw every single card that he needed to. Yeah, absolutely. Those board clears didn't quite materialize as quickly for Nyria as he maybe would have liked there. He ended up having to stall out a little longer than he needed to and draw into his deck to try to find a way around Life Coach. Couldn't quite do it. And, I mean, a. A well-played game there by Life Coach. I got to say, holding on into it. I mean, that's a tough one. When somebody comes in looking to to basically play into what you're running, uh, again, it takes a lot of restraint. Some good play there by Life Coach. Seeing around it, a very a very heady game, uh, which is a bit different from a lot of the things we've seen so far today, which have been fairly straightforward. So Nyria really switching it up. Life Coach showing some some depth and some range there. Uh, Nyria got a couple, or he's got all three of his decks left. Life Coach going to be sitting with uh, Druid and Hunter uh, left in play. Yeah, so I think uh, because Druid and Hunter are left, um, Nyria, he might struggle uh, throughout the rest of the series because Freeze Mage, typically, it's not that good against Druid. And depending on the type of Hunter, uh, as long as it's not Face Hunter, it's not too great against Face Hunter either. So Nyria, even though he has three decks remaining, this Freeze Mage, we have to watch out for this deck because it could just be the weak link here. Absolutely. So, going to see what uh, what Nyria is running. We've seen Life Coach a little bit earlier on in the day. Nyria, obviously new to us because he got a buy through that play-in round into the quarterfinals. Didn't end up having a round of eight, I think it would have been. Uh, so, again, quarterfinals match two. Going to decide who's going to see Kalinto in the semis. Life Coach got a game up here on Nyria, so we'll see. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's rough when, you're, when your teammate's not, uh, not too sure you've got the kit to take it to town. But, uh, hey, man, stranger things have happened, absolutely. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's going to be, uh, this might be a, probably a faster game here. Life Coach will be playing the Druid against the Hunter from Nyria, and I believe it's going to be at least somewhat of a mid-rangey Hunter. And wow, this hand from Life Coach, it's, it can either go just amazingly or horribly, depending on what he draws next. And you know what? He draws a Pilot Treader next, so this is actually going to be amazing because, yeah, he's going to curve out pretty well, 
Plus, he has the tech of an ooze in his deck. And what that leads me to believe is that if he has an ooze, there's a very good possibility that he also has a Harrison Jones in his deck. A lot of players have been just really teching against Patron Warrior lately and putting two anti-weapon cards into their deck, which is not good yeah. against Hunter either. Yeah, or, which I, is good I, against Hunter, rather. Yeah, yeah, good against the Eagle Horn Bow. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can't for the life of me remember if we saw the ooze earlier. I think the, the Druid game ended up a little bit short earlier on. Going to see the cards for Nyria now. He's sitting on a Creeper, a high main, Hunter's Mark, and Lotheb, Life Coach. Uh, I mean, nice little early game there. Gets to coin out the Wild Growth, sitting pretty. He's got his Piloted Shredder and adds a Wrath to it with the Force of Nature and the Swamp Ooze Juggler out for Nyria. As we roll into game two here, uh, good start for Life Coach so far. Obviously, very early days yet, and we'll see if Nyria can find his way to some hurt. Put him on a big German. Yeah, life coach right now, he has to decide, um, can I take this three damage from my opponent um, or can I go for the more greedy play with the wild growth? Um, one argument for just playing the wrath right now is that this wild growth doesn't actually open you to too many things on the very next turn because at five mana on the next turn, you can do pretty much any everything that you can do already with four mana that you'll have on the next turn. There's no uh, Druid of the Claw in his hand, no Lothab, nothing like that. So this wrath, uh, I think it does definitely has some merit. Yeah, not going to try and get away with anything too cute right there. Just going to put the three damage down. Clear the board, Mad Scientist. Draw for Nyria. He's going to send the creeper out. Is he? Yeah, he is. There we go. Thought about it for a second, but he uh, he likes the spiders. Yeah, I would think that the Mad Scientist might be slightly stronger. But I think um, because he has the Hunter's Mark in his hand, I think it might make more sense for his um for that hunter creeper to come out because if he uses some combination of um of hunter's mark and mad scientist of course he'll get a secret out but his board won't be as developed shredder gonna be the drop after life coach does some quick mental math decides that that's what he's happy with and sends it back over another creeper for nyria and he's gonna go ahead and get the scientist out that time and have another little spider join his friend on the board yeah this is kind of what uh kind of what the hunter wants. Of course, the druid had a wild growth, but because the druid was on player two, the and he only used one wild growth. Plus, he used his coin to uh, do, activate his wild growth. What pretty much this means is that life coach essentially switched places with his opponent, and instead that he's player one and his opponent is player two. So not too much. Giving up one card plus the coin for um for and a wild growth is pretty much exactly switching places. And even though Life Coach got the wild growth, Naria has been curving out just amazingly every single turn, which pretty much, that's what that's what a mid-range hunter wants. It has a lot of cards that are really good for the mana. Haunter Creeper, a Mad Scientist at turn two, Animal Companion is pretty much the best turn three drop. Again, Pilot Shredder, the best turn four drop. And Savannah Jaime in the best turn six drop. So as long as the hunter curves out, I think it's gonna be pretty nice. Emperor Thorazane is going to come out, but I don't know. This uh, Hunter's Market is going to do really well. Plus, Savannah High Main is just going to be amazing. What we have to notice, though, is that Force of Nature Savage Roar is out. Um, it's going to be reduced in mana. So pretty much any time, um, anytime, like pretty much all the time, Life Coach is going to be threatening the combo. And Pagel. So possibly some card draw here for Life Coach as the most handsome 0-4 in the game lands on the field. Uh, Hunter's Mark going to help get rid of that Thor sand nice and clean. Lothab obviously making an uh, expensive proposition to do anything else last turn, but he got pretty decent value for that. And Dr. Boom in the hand. Board uh, pretty comfortably full at the moment. Not quite there, but certainly going to keep uh, Boom out for just a second. Well, most, most handsome 0-4. So you're saying that he's more handsome than Lord Walker Cho? All day. Okay. Not more fun to bring to the party because he smells like fish. And uh, honestly, he talks a little funny. Lord Walker Cho, that's the guy you want. Great stories. And he's going to really make your game super weird for everybody involved. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like some of the best moments are from, best Hearthstone highlights are from Lord Walker Cho. Yeah. Such as when Naria got it at DreamHack, uh, the last DreamHack. Uh, in a match against Dog, and just like the game went oh, ballistic. I saw it. So good. I, I love that every time Lore Walker Cho comes out, there's that unspoken, we're not going to kill Lore Walker Cho, we're going to leave him on the field the entire time. Because again, as hard as it might make it for, you know, even if you're running a spell-heavy deck, as hard as it might make it for you to make decisions, it's going to make it just that uh, equally as hard for your opponent to make decisions about which spells they want to give you 
Um, and it's great watching players play around it because it forces that that critical thinking in the moment. Life coach got a shredder on the field. Uh, poor Pagel went the uh, way of the dinos there. It's going to be force of nature. Yeah, he's going to mm. okay. test out Probably. the trap. And yeah, like we said, uh, this is going to be a double weapon removal, but unfortunately, Naria hasn't drawn a weapon here. <laughs> so he's, he's life coach is going to be forced to play this as a 3-2. And just like this hunter, he's just curving out so well. He even has Dr. Boom on this turn that... Um, I'm not sure like how Life Coach can take this, but I think what Life Coach is going for is that he puts his opponent at exactly 14 HP. So even though he gave up his Force of Nature, he has a second Force of Nature in his hand. So he gives his, his he gives himself an option out. If he draws a Force of Nature in the next one or two turns, I think he's going to take it, and he's willing to take those chances. Got a web spinner as well, so he's got some nice little uh, plenty of RNG fun in there. Let's see how it cranks out, and he's going to end up uh, grabbing. Zappomatic, and uh, it's going to get taken care of sadly right away. So Life Coach just with no luck there. Boom on the field, and the high main going to rock six to the face. Life Coach uh, going to look for some options here. Swipe, not a bad one. Yeah, Swipe will pretty much clear everything. And what Swipe will also do is that um, there's no secret on the board, right? Because the secret is already triggered. Yeah. Yeah, so I believe that's correct. And yeah, like what Swipe will also do is because of how much it'll clear on the board, I believe it will give Life Coach at least one more turn to draw that uh, for second force of nature. So he's giving himself one more turn. It's ex probably exactly the card of what he wanted, short of the second force of nature. Yeah, definitely a big buy time buyer right there. Certainly not the uh, three mana treant. Uh, he's a nice guy, but uh, he's not the one that you want uh, hanging out right now. He's still got his wild growth hanging around. And, uh, yeah, Life Coach, whew, I mean, that's a tough board to be staring down. Swipe's definitely what you want. He's going to think it out, though. I mean, obviously, this is not a spot. We've said it before when Life Coach is thinking things through. It's not a spot where you want to make the wrong move. Uh, and Savage Roar, going to be the drop. Oh, that's a really interesting one. So how much does that put his opponent at? Gonna end up on yeah, hero power. Down to okay. three. So I was gonna say four, so I just waited till it was done, and it was three, and that made me look not quite as bad. But then I said that that was what I was gonna say, and it didn't work. Oh wow! So pretty much Nevria knows he's dead right now because he knows his opponent has a treant. It's very rare that Hunter doesn't have uh, just like four extra damage in hand, but this is one of the situations. Wow! I didn't see that play at all. The life coach saw it. He put his opponent at three health exactly, so that this exact combination of uh, treant plus hero power could just win the game here. I mean, really, really nicely done, and good on life coach. The treant wasn't what you want a couple turns ago. Now it's exactly what he wants, and uh, he's going to grab a doctor boom for good measure. Out comes the treant, bonk, and then a little bit of hero power, a little bit extra bonk, and Nyria. Whoa. To go down two games to none against Life Coach. A quicker game, but still a very, very tight game there. I mean, you can see uh, that Nyria is just inches away from victory here in the first two games of this set. But as it is, Life Coach up two games. Nyria playing for his life, and Life Coach looking to roll forward to face Kalinto in those semifinals if he can pull one more away. Oh, yeah, definitely. That was certainly a pretty exciting match. Very well played by uh, Life Coach, I would have to say. I don't yeah. think, like, I think most players would have lost that match because it's yeah, just, it was so hard to see through. Like, he had to put him, his opponent, ex at exactly three health and then use the exact card in his, in his hand to do that. But we're going to go with on one and possibly the last match, Patron Warrior against Midrange Hunter, a matchup that's actually typically favored for the Patron Warrior. Yeah, what, what ends up usually happening here is the Midrange Hunter, it builds up a good board. But then the um, the patron warrior kind of stabilizes at somewhere between 10 to 15 health. And he just is able to come back building up some armor, building up patrons, and just uh, filling up the board with patrons. Enough patrons that the uh, the hunter can't deal with. So life coach, going to be hoping to make it through this one. I mean, obviously a clean 3-0 is going to keep you nice and fresh as you roll into the, the semifinals against Kalinto. Uh, but, uh, you know, even if he doesn't make it through here, Nyria... He's got uh, two more decks, so he'll have some opportunity. So, I mean, Life Coach, with some crucial breathing room by picking up that 2-0 earlier, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give him some room to breathe and try to find a win if he can't find one here against the Patron Warrior. Um, obviously, he's going to keep on looking. 
But again, I mean, that last game there, again, very creative, thoughtful play by Life Coach. One of those things that, uh, you know, obviously he gets made fun of a lot, uh, even in the the Archon Team League there. He, they, they drew him with a rope. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you make fun of him all you want. That's the sort of stuff that uh, lets that guy take the time and uh, puzzle out plays like that, that uh, get him through some very, very narrow situations. And can't argue with it. Freezing trap, the look here from Life Coach, very yeah. possibly. Uh, very interesting that I believe uh, Life Coach actually kept that freezing trap. And I believe that's for two reasons. First, it's to deli- deny the Acolyte from uh, just doing any attacks, just proccing uh, and drawing more cards. And the second is because he had the Eagle Horn Bow in his opening hand. It's, it's a pretty good combo, I'd have to say. And again, like just getting the Acolyte off the field is so important because this uh, uh, Life Coach would know as a very experienced Patron Warrior player, but it's all about just keep cycling through uh, the ability to keep cycling through your entire deck. Just using the Acolyte to leverage those draws. Nyria got his unstable ghoul ready. Got the coin as well if he's in a real hurry to get an Acolyte out. But seeing that trap pop up, probably not going to be in too big of a rush. And it will be unstable ghoul. Sends it back over to Life Coach. Explosive trap grab right there. And it's going to be freezing trap, eagle horn bow follow up. And just a nice clean clear onto that unstable ghoul. Not the first time we've seen that. Go that way. Uh, nice clean, nice clean pickup, and there's the acolyte of pain for Nyria. Oh, pretty Iron much a Beach. perfect draw here yeah. for a life coach. Well, I wouldn't say perfect, but I would definitely a pretty good one. Again, just the idea of denying your opponent cards at every step of the way. Um, if he didn't draw that owl, he probably would have had to been forced to uh, use his eagle horn bow to kill off this acolyte, mm. just to prevent something like uh, a cruel taskmaster. Or maybe a second, um, a second unstable goal from coming on to the field. Yeah, and with Lothab in hand, wants to give himself a little bit of time here. Life coach, still going to think it through. Make sure he's pulling the right moves here. But uh, nice, nice play with the Iron Beak Al. Uh, nice play. I should say, nice grab. As uh, I, 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 life coach could have picked one. Probably would have been. High up on the list, but it uh, wasn't his choice. It was the RNG gods. They called down and said, you may have a silence. <laughs> yeah, not too many other plays here. I mean, if he doesn't clear this yeah. Acolyte, we can see that uh, a devastating Acolyte, second Acolyte of Pain, plus, uh, plus the Whirlwind will come down on the field. Yeah, Probably the worst option. Good early value. Just going to silence it and put two on. Let it sit on the board. One damage, not scary. Battle Rage grab for Nyria, and he is going to pop the secret, see what's up. Get it back into his hand. Little opportunity to bring him back out later at uh, much, uh, much more questionable cost, but it's okay. He's got his other acolyte. He's going to throw him onto the board and whirlwind it up to make sure that no shenanigans happen with the draws next time he gets himself a death spike. Yeah, pretty good draws from Nyria here. He has a death spite, pretty much exactly what he needed. And uh, again, he isn't being put on. A lot of not a lot of pressure has been put on by his opponent. Um, pretty much the Lothab is the first real threat that Life Coach will have. And as we saw from the previous game where Nyria was using the mid range hunter, it's all about the mid range hunter curving out really well, getting a very strong turn two into three into four with pretty much the best three, two, three, and four drops in the game, and then just pressuring your opponent out. But because a life coach hasn't done that, it's all about the patron warrior to come up with like some insane patron combos on the um, on turn six through eight. The it's basically the hunter that has the initiative turns one through six by curving out, and it's the patron that has the initiative turns like six through nine by playing emperor and by going into a uh, one of those war song plus patron warrior combos or patron a grim patron combos rather. Acolyte going to toss a Corsair in. Death's Bite play for Nyria as he grabs an Execute, which uh, costs a plenty this time around. Dread Corsair out for free. And just going to bonk. A little bonk on, on the face. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting card by Nyria. Dread Corsair is actually one of those uh, Patron Warrior cards that was really popular uh, up until around two or three weeks ago. Um, up, and that was when pretty much everyone was switching it out for more slams, more unstable ghouls, and um, just more comp cards that combo really well. And also cards like Harrison Jones, because other patrons were getting even more popular. So just kind of a, a throwback from Nyria, basically. 
Nice in there. He just doesn't want to change it up. He likes it the way it is, and uh, that's okay. Sometimes people like vanilla. You know, he yep. doesn't have to go for the strawberry ice cream if he doesn't want to. He's in Irea. He pays his bills, pays his taxes. He'll do what he wants. Life coach. Got a mad scientist and a creeper sitting there. Uh, hounds. Nothing too exciting at the moment, so it's going to be... Uh, just maybe uh, get some friends out on the board. Get himself set up to roll forward. Obviously, uh, things got to be getting a little bit questionable over there as we're starting to get into the deck a little bit. Life Coach not with a lot of great answers to some of the stuff Nyria could be drawing. He's not quite there yet. Uh, still waiting on actually pretty far away. And he spent a whirlwind a little earlier as well. He's going to get the trap on there and Mad Scientist out. Oh, I was thinking that maybe Life Coach had actually roped out the hero power, but no, he went for it. And the problem with Life Coach's hand, you can see him even uh, shaking his uh, head right now, is because pretty much the five cards in his hand right there were the five worst cards that he could have gotten. None of them were really good in the matchup, and also some of them were even a liability, specifically the um, the Mad Scientist and the Haunted Creeper. The Haunted Creeper at this stage of the game is pretty much Oh, I'm going to give my opponent uh, three free patrons. How does that sound? Probably not good in, uh, if you're the hunter player. First hand on the field. Going to get the hunter's mark called. And that'll clear with the scientist. Add a trap on. And he'll go face with the rest of the damage. Eagle horn bow to replace the old one. And send it back over after a steady shot. Nyria now still looking to uh, pull into some of the... Uh, some of the meat, Frothing Berserk are going to be a good start of pulling into the meat of that Patron Warrior. Oh, this is going to be a pretty huge turn. Just pretty much uh, drawing out the rest of his deck at this moment. Naria, he has no qualms about it. And easy, not easy. only that, gonna get the Patron. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, he has pretty much all the pieces of the combo in his hand to kill his opponent off. And he'll be helped out by the explosive chop on his opponent's side of the board. And there's the commander, Gnomish Inventor, and uh, whew, Life Coach. I mean, he's got to know. I mean, it just bunko draws for Life Coach right now as he grabs a quick shot. I, knowing that Nyria is getting deep into the deck, that can't feel particularly good. So he's just going to spend everything, do what he can, get the armor ticked away. Piloted Shredder going to be grabbed up. Not enough left in the tank to get it out, and he's going to just have to get a little bit more card draw to Nyria, which at this point, not really something he wants to do, but there's nowhere to go with it. Yeah, I guess one thing maybe that uh, Life Coach has going for him is that at least there's a Freezing Trap on the field. Yeah. Um, and there's actually no way for Nyria to use his... Uh, actually, he can just Warsong, Grim Patron, attack his opponent's face, and just spawn massive amounts of Grim Patrons. That seems to be pretty good. Um, and it would pretty much lock his opponent out of the game. But Nyria, he sees he's at a pretty high life total, so he decides to play this game maybe slightly slower. Yeah, not a bad way. I mean, obviously, there's some improvement. There's some stuff he can still slide into the hand that make taking care of this even better, especially now that he's able to weave in a hero power and start just beefing up just a little extra bit. He's got that unstable ghoul on the front line, which is, you know, going uh, to force Life Coach to take a little bit of gumph. And uh, Animal Companion going to be the grab for Life Coach. Will he go ahead and throw it out? Might as well. See what you get. Nope. Yes. Nope. Is he going to hero power? Is he going to... Animal Companion, it's, uh, you could flip a coin on it. Well, I think uh, his main issue is that if he gets Leoc, it's even worse. And the other issue is that pretty much all the Animal Companions get contest contested completely by the Death Spite that's already in, uh, equipped by Nerea. But, you know, at, at this point, I think, like, Life Coach might just have to go with the mentality that he did in the Patron versus Freeze Mage game, and that I just have to get it out. Hope my opponent, even though he has, like, 10 cards, I hope he doesn't have anything. But that's certainly not going to be the case, and I believe this is going to be the turn where Nyria says, hey, it's time to go for it. It's time for that infamous patron combo. Yeah, good value on both the traps there. Ugh. As uh, Life Coach just going to have to watch it happen. Warsong patron as it gets started up. He's got a slam sitting around as well, so Nyria just in great shape here. I, you know, it's tenuous, long, very thought-heavy games. Nyria just going to come out with the big blunt hammer that is Grim Patron. He managed to sit around long enough to get it all into his hand, and now Life Coach going to be back up against the wall unless he finds something crazy good here. Oh, my God. That's pretty good. Yeah, Nyria. <laughs> well played. Got to give him props for them random drops. And... Uh, not too shabby. 
Yeah, I mean, it's still, like, like Nerea's still gonna get a million patrons, but at least, uh, this way there's only really one that's damaged, or really one that's full health, so Life Coach can actually just, he can, like, kill off that, uh, patron, and then if he get, draws maybe an, an Unleash the Hounds after, that can be okay. So yeah, no, right now he got, well. he got kind of lucky here, I would have to say, and at least he can kill two patrons, or the Warsong Commander and the 3-3 three, three patron, leaving only the 3-1, which can't duplicate. I tell you, man, every time I think Life Coach is on the break, <laughs> he turns it around. Oh, I guess in this case, again, he didn't turn it around. That was the RNG God smiling upon him. He gets Huffer as well. I mean, just uh, ends up in a great spot. Not a whole lot this patron's. Uh, not a huge threat. Basically, he's got a Gnomish Inventor or two sitting in there if Nyria wants to run the deck some more, but uh, that's uh, just a rough way to be. He's going to go three to the face, uh, put the War Song out, frothing Berserker, and see what he can do. And wow, well, that's uh, pretty much not it. too shabby, yeah, but uh, game right there. Life Coach, I mean, he was. He was right there. Nice little RNG swing, but uh, Nyria had just a little bit too much gas left in the tank. Going to go 2 1 now as Nyria starts to claw his way back. We'll see if he can hang on here as uh, obviously the patron warrior uh, in good shape in that last matchup. We'll see going forward. What has he got left over here? Let me take a look. Hey, I'm totally delaying in a believable kind of way. Uh, that was his warrior that he just won with. So Hunter he has and Mage. Freeze Mage and Hunter left. And you saw at the end of that game, Life Coach was kind of deep in thought. He was thinking, just thinking back on the game and wondering, what could I have done better? And I think the answer to that is he just had to draw better. His yeah. opening hand was pretty much like the most abysmal mid-range hunter hand I've ever seen. Pretty much he didn't play a minion until turn five. And just hero powering uh, as the hunter, I mean, the hunter hero power is pretty good, but it's not that good. Yeah, uh, it's... Phew. Uh, just rough draws. I mean, we saw Kibler end up in a even more desperate situation early on in this tournament where he just basically drew into nothing the entire game long. I mean, a little bit of luck with the RNG there at the end with the drop, but, uh, you know, it wasn't enough to turn the game around. It gave him a little little glimmer of hope, but still couldn't find the draws to get it back into it. Life Coach gives the game over to Nyria. I mean, uh, you know, not bad. Like you said, a little bit of breathing room so Life Coach doesn't have to start freaking out just yet. Obviously, if Nyria picks up this next game, Bullet's going to be sweating right out of the pores on Life Coach's forehead. And uh, we'll see, man. Uh, we'll see. Nyria, strong play. He's kept it patient. He's he's rolling with the punches when he gets what he needs. Uh, he's keeping it cool. And when he doesn't get what he needs, he's shrugging it off. And, uh, you know, that's what you got to do to play at this kind of level. Life Coach Nyria. Game four we're into. Yeah, wow. And uh, at least this is probably a much better start for Nyria here. Okay, both players have pretty good starts, actually. Um, although, I would probably say Nyria's might be slightly better going as uh, the player starting on turn two. Plus, um, he has a one drop. Now, you have to question, uh, as life coach, do you actually keep Unleash the Hounds in this matchup? And what I've heard from a lot of famous... Uh, mid-range hunter players like Jab is that no, you don't because eventually you have to draw into them anyway. And it's more important in the early game to contest the board, basically just curving out on one, two, three. Yeah, sort of trying to think about where am I going to use this? Am I going to use it straight away? Not necessarily, so we'll find it later on. And uh, again, that's a big part of play at this level that a lot, not a lot of people necessarily think about is how you're going to mulligan what you're going to end up with, coin over to Nyria, and he's going to end up with uh, Spinner, Owl, Eagle Horn, Bow, and Freezing Trap on the other side. Double Hunter's Mark, Mad Scientist, and Creeper. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. Double Hunter's Mark. Um, we've seen that recently in a mid-range Hunter deck by Death Star V3, but his deck, basically the thought process behind it was that you get two Death Lords into your deck, um, and then you just use Hunter's Mark on whatever comes out of Death Lords. So... Um, this deck, it's really interesting. Like he's he has two hunters marks, but we haven't seen Death Lords yet. So I'm not sure about the yeah. synergy here. So I'm actually really wondering what Life Coach has teched this against. And it actually makes sense when we're thinking about the last game in retrospect. It makes sense that he might be drawing more poorly because he has more situational cards in his deck. 
So trying to find a way around it by making sure he can minimize the threats from Nyria. In this case, it's going to be going uh, pretty much heads up here and see where things land. Web spinner out on the board for Nyria. Life coach thinking it down again. He did pull an eagle horn bow. Going to be useful next time around. Does he want the creeper, the mad scientist? Uh, you know, either way. What do you do? You creeper, mad scientist? You, which I you, think... Uh, uh, I think the issue with just throwing down a mad scientist here is that your opponent can coin out a bow and then if your opponent gets like pretty much any trap that comes out of the mad scientist, the um, the haunted creeper will just be able to deal with so effectively. I mean, it's a 1-1. One, one. If he gets frozen, uh, you're super happy. If an explosive hits, you're also really happy. So I, I definitely like to see this uh, haunted creeper more. If you just bow the haunted creeper, you still have two 1-1s one, that can test the, the web center really well. Plenty of options for Nyria this turn as he's sitting on the coin, pulls Animal Companion. He's got an Owl, a Creeper, and a Freezing Trap as well. And, uh, yeah, just all day. I'll play all day for Nyria as he's uh, in a pretty good spot here. Yeah, um, uh, this Freezing Trap, usually you don't want to play traps from your hand, but I think this makes a lot of sense because your opponent's uh, Hunter Creeper will be able to deal with your um, Web Spinner so easily. In addition, you're probably predicting your opponent's turn three will be an animal companion, which Life Coach just happened to draw. And if he goes with that play instead, then your Eagle Horn bow that you have in your hand pretty much just contests everything. So he's going to get Huffer out of it. It's a tough one here as, you know, he's got to be thinking, man, uh, okay, great, I pulled charge, but uh, I don't really have a whole lot that I want to charge at the moment. You can't really leave it sitting there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a bad space to be because nobody wants to pay to put Huffer back out on the field. He's always nice when you get him out of Animal Companion, but not when he gets that price increase. He starts eating the food around your house. Man, he's a nuisance. Yeah. So right now, po Life Coach being a poker player, he's probably just uh, analyzing, like, the odds of um, what these traps are and how he plays around each one. Like, if it's Explosive Trap and he attacks the face, it could be disastrous. If it's Snake Trap and he attacks the Haunted Creeper, that could be disastrous as well, but he, he kind of figures out that it's way more likely for this trap to be um, to be ex um, to be snake trap, or rather, it, it's way more likely that like I'll be able to kill off this hunter creeper. And wow, like I didn't expect this because you normally you want to um, put more damage on your opponent's face, but this again it gives Naria a really difficult turn again. Like he can get rid of this this um, this boar. This Huffer, rather, with uh, his Eagle Horn bow. But right now, Life Coach has the board initiative. Yeah, he's going to go take the damage to face. Uh, Life Coach, got to feel pretty decent with the value for money there. Emperor Cobra, the pickup out of the web spinner and a knife juggler for Life Coach. Any old time he wants to use it, but not a ton of stuff to throw on the board at the moment to follow him up. He does have the Mad Scientist in hand. It wouldn't be a terrible time to get himself a trap on board, but... Uh, that's, yeah, that's, uh, it's also got his Eagle Horde bow that he could throw out there. Hey, if he really wants to pay four for a Haunted Creeper, he could get that guy back out on the field. Yeah, probably not too likely, but the issue Life Coach is facing is that, yeah, there's an Eagle Horn bow on your opponent's side of the field. Pretty much uh, everything that you can play is contested by that. And he just has to, like, make a sacrifice, basically. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you don't want it to necessarily be the juggler, especially when you don't have anything... Uh, it's just no value for it, so it is going to be go ahead and spend four on that haunted creeper. Let Nyria spend that evil horn bow any old way he wants. And uh, knife juggler grab for Nyria there. Yeah, I would have to say that um, this is pretty much a play that yeah you're behind, but you have to go for the play that um, that gives you an opportunity to come back later on to the game. And because he saved his knife juggler, life coach has the opportunity to draw into his unleash the hounds. In which turn five, unleash the hounds, uh, or rather, knife juggler unleash the, unleash the hounds, and up to two hunters' marks could just uh, end the game completely. Yeah, could really do a big, big load of damage there. He's gonna use the iron beak gal, silence up the creeper, and then pop it with the bow, send Huffer to face, and back over to Life Coach, who's gonna grab unleash. Oh wow, there it is. So yeah, this is uh, pretty much pretty much exactly what Life Coach was looking for. This is the opportunity for him to come back, but uh, is he going to use it now? I mean, there's only two minions on the field, and if both knives somehow miss these um, these two minions, then it could just be disastrous for Life Coach yet again. He would still be put in a really uh, dire situation. 
Yeah, with the hunter's marks in play, he's got the eagle horn bow and the mad scientist sitting around. Uh, I mean, it's definitely one of those things that you got to think. Okay, do I, you know, do I want to hold on to this for later? Am I going to be able to use it later? Uh, also, a very good question he's going to have to be thinking about here as he's running into Nyria's hunter. Doesn't have too much information about it, but um, yeah, it's it's definitely a bit more complex, obviously, with those two hunters' marks sitting in there because he can get super good value out of the knife juggler a little bit later on. Yeah. Potentially, I, obviously. I, I don't think he's behind um, that much so that he has to go for it now. Basically, if you just contest the board a little bit here with the Eagle Horn and Mad Scientist, as we can see, then he is somewhat ahead on board now. Plus, he has the ability to come back on the board with a like just a huge swing. Piloted Shredder pulled from the deck for Nyria and Mad Scientist maybe going to be the drop, going to get joined possibly by that uh, Emperor Cobra. Yep. And Owl to face, hoo hoo. There we go, sends it back over. Yeah, no point to activate the trap. Uh, Life Coach more likely than not is uh, probably gonna activate the trap for him the next turn. Unfortunately, this doesn't play around Knife Juggler Unleash the Hounds, which I have to think that will be coming down this turn. Yeah, and the second Creeper in the hand, so definitely uh, he's set up for it and set up to get value off of it next turn as well if he manages to keep it on the board. Uh, obviously, with the Emperor Cobra out there, uh, he's going to be wanting to get rid of that, if at all possible. Should be possible. But, uh, yeah, Life Coach, yeah, not going to waste too much time here. Knife Juggler, Hounds, and a big, nice dog handshake friendly with the teeth. Uh, it's good stuff. And, oh, wow, those are two to face. Juggles. Yeah, he, it's going to just have to spin dogs into the Cobra unless he wants to give up the juggler right away. And he's going to go scientist for scientist. It's the only respectable way to deal with a scientist is with another scientist. Freezing trap, going to send a hound back into the hand. Oh, always hurts, and there you go, just Hunter's Mark. Fine. Take care of it. Emperor Cobra, such a pain to deal with here in uh, Life Coach. You know, not going to get uh, super great value because those juggles just didn't go where he needed them. Knife juggler hounds now for Nyria. He's got a piloted shredder and a haunted creeper as well. Yeah, I think uh, Nyria was actually in a pretty dire position the previous turn. But because he drew the Unleash the Hounds, now he has the opportunity to get the Hunter v. Hunter swing that he desperately needs. Animal Companion grab for Life Coach. Buy him a little bit of time or buff something up or who knows what it'll do. We'll see. It's going to be Leok, just in time. What a great guy Leok is. Super, everybody loves him. Yeah, so friendly. Uh, you know, no, I, Leok is almost never welcome on the board. <laughs> I mean, there are situations where you love to see him. But a lot of times, everybody's just kind of mad about him. And I always feel bad for him as a result. Totem drop out of the shredder. It's weird that a totem could pilot anything, but it does I mean, look uh, angry enough to pilot a shredder. Yeah, definitely. I mean, these are inanimate objects piloting things. I mean, who would give like a totem a license to pilot anything, right? You sure you don't want a totem to like drive your car around, right? Or just no. anywhere on the on the field. Not of my battle. car. Somebody else's car. I would watch. I would watch it from a safe distance with binoculars, of course. But <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely not my car. Houndmaster grab there. So we've got juggler unleash the hounds. Houndmaster in Nyria's hand. Uh, I mean the Leoc. Grab going to work out pretty good here as the board's cleared down pretty nicely. The Creeper, not a massive threat at the moment. And Life Coach with one of his own. So if he needs to go trading across looking for friends, he can definitely do so. He's still got that three-cost Hound in his hand. And you know what? I'm not going to besmirch it because the Treant worked out for him uh, a little bit earlier. So maybe three-cost Hound is a, is a good friend to have. And, uh, wow, okay, not going for the um, Unleash combo, but he does have the opportunity to go for the uh, Houndmaster combo. And that, like, it could be even slightly better um, in the sense that it clears just more things here and it allows you to kind of get up a taunt, just protect your board here. And not only that, you're going to have an, a potential for another Knife Juggler combo later on in the board. And you have at least one Knife Juggler and one Hound. So if he draws an Unleash the Hounds, that'll be perfect. If he draws another, uh, any minion, any low mana cost minion, that's also going to be good. Quick shot there. If Life Coach wants to spend it, he's also got the Hunter's Mark so he can clear things away nice and clean here. Obviously doesn't have 
uh, any three damage on the board. He can take it to face if he wants to, but since 16 versus 20, that's one that he's going to have to think just a little while about, especially, like you said, with quick shot. Sitting in the hand, um, it is going to be the Hunter's Mark play. Yeah, we're probably going to see everything here. Um, we see Life Coach. He, he knows he has two quick shots in his deck, and he's pretty much going to be using this as like kind of like a Hammer of Wrath here, a two-mana hammer, hammer of Wrath. And he even draws something that fills up his mana completely, so... Yeah, really spinner. nice from Life Coach, and I think the only way for Nari to come back here is if he draws the, that um, Unleash the Hounds on the very next turn. Oh, he's slowing down a little bit here. Okay, looks like he's going to have time. I always get a little worried for Life Coach. We did see, uh, who was it? Harudra, I think. Somebody missed lethal in a patron game on the back of that rope, and uh, I've been terrified of it, of it ever since. Oh, that honestly, that's so common these days. Players yeah. missing lethal from just uh, patrons not hitting. Uh, Only balanced see, because of the animation timer. <laughs> exactly. We see it pretty much in every tournament. And it's kind of, at this point, it's kind of even expected. So Nevria, he doesn't play his knife juggler here because I think he knows that, okay, the only way I come back from this game is if I get Unleash the Hounds next turn, maybe. But other than that, there's pretty much no hope. Yeah, down to 13. 13 to 14, so a close game, but with the Eagle Horn bow sitting there, the high main all but you know, answered for and uh, just not a whole lot to work with and that web spinner being more ominous than one would hope. Leok, you know what? Welcome at this party because honestly, he's been really great value for Life Coach. Yeah, just a super raid leader at this point with uh, yeah. four health. And he's going to pop the web. Do you pop it? Do you give him the card to play next turn with his hand empty? Nyria, oh, the struggle is real. What if he gets yeah. King Crush? I mean, what if he gets anything? Oh, Angry Chicken. He gets Angry Chicken. Oh. <laughs> what a great play from Nyria. And while Explosive Trap, it's not going to be too helpful here. No, not terribly. And honestly, it's uh, still, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, he can he can take that six. But yeah, it's uh, it's going to keep the high main around just for a second. Unless, I mean, obviously, you clear it to uh, just take the damage. Angry Chicken. <laughs> oh, I love Angry Chicken. So just going to go to face with it and uh, keep the pressure up. Going to put him on down to four. Get the trap on and send it over. And uh, yeah, n pretty much nothing Nyria can draw can win at this point. Uh, even if it is, unleash the hounds. Um, the, the problem is that like he's at four HP and Hunter doesn't have any heals unless he gets a Vitality Totem off of a Pilot Shredder, which we have seen in this game so far to be fair. So uh, Nairia is pretty much on a two-turn clock, and Life Coach even taking some water. He knows he's taking this easy peasy. He's comfy, yeah. Nod there. He's like, okay, that move is within parameters. Got the juggler, booms there. So he's gonna get a couple throws. Yeah. The funny thing here is uh, he actually, you know, he actually has somewhat of a chance in that he can't hit the hunter creeper at all, and he has to kill this chicken. Oh my God! He actually. Oh. Oh, awesome. but he gets the creeper. Nairia knew it. Well he sees it. Four, he'll do it, and he's gonna get. <laughs> he's gonna put the four on board. Kill command there anyway. So easy cleanup here for Life Coach after uh, again a, an entire set of four games that were just incredibly close, incredibly well played by both players, showing that they more than deserve to be here in the quarterfinal. Uh, and it's gonna be Life Coach that moves on. I got to say, big plays by Life Coach coming in, wasn't even prepared for the tournament. He replaced Tides of Time, who couldn't make it for the tournament. Life Coach having to come in extra, play a couple of games off stream, and he's really worked his way here into the semifinals against Kalinto. Oh, yeah. Just brilliant play from Life Coach all around. I have to say the most impressive game probably of the series was that mid-range Druid versus mid-range Hunter game. I believe that was game two, where it looked like Nairia. He was just curving out perfectly every single turn. He was hitting every single drop. But life coach, he was in a dire position. He, there were he was facing two high uh, high mains, possibly a Doctor Boom, and he saw, hey, if I just do this move, and he doesn't have anything, he can't lethal me. If he somehow doesn't have a kill command in his hand right now, I can potentially win the game. Um, just amazing thinking from life coach, just playing to his cards, playing to his draws. Just not a lot of um, moves that not a lot of people would have done. Yeah, I mean, incredibly easy to write off a freezing trap treant as just you know, fodder. Like, that's there. Maybe I'll play it if I'm just absolutely screwed for draws on, on some late-game turn. But, uh, you know, that's 
you got to love life coach. You got to love the time and thought he puts into every single turn of the game to make sure that he's playing optimally and has paid off for him big here today. Well, we're going to be back in just a few minutes with the semifinals game. It's going to be Kalinto versus life coach. Life coach likes to unwind, think about the games after. So hopefully it won't be too terribly long. We're going to get those set up while we're gone. Head over to Vulcan.com slash Hearthstone. Get your fantasy esports on. Have some fun. Play some bets. Uh, you know, enjoy yourself. Head over to Squarespace, the other sponsor for this fantastic Vul Vulcan Deck Masters tournament, squarespace.com slash Deck Masters. If you need a website for anything, it's a great place to look. If you don't have the skills to put it together yourself, they make it super duper easy. I recommend going and giving it a look while we've got some downtime here. You kids, it's with your internets these days, go ahead and check it out. Again, Monk, thank you so much for, for helping to fill in. Guys, we will be right back with the uh, semifinals play between Kalinto and Life Coach. <laughs> 